Here is a 1991 Canton Phonom 251 speaker. This was brought in by a friend of mine. He does have a pair of them, but for the diagnosis he only gave me this one. The complaint is quite simple, no treble output. Now, that would indicate quite a typical problem. The speakers got overloaded, like during a party, and the tweeters blew up. So that was the first step. I took out the tweeter, disconnected it from the crossover, and measured the resistance of the voice coil. And it was fine. So I then went on and connected another known good tweeter, but that would not produce any output either. So I then got the oscilloscope and connected it to the output of the crossover, and the crossover would put out a signal, but it was very, very low. Too low for the tweeters to do anything. So I looked around the crossover, and as you can see, it does look perfectly fine. There is nothing obviously wrong. So finally, after measuring some of those resistors, my attention turned towards the bipolar capacitors. There is two of them. And this is the one that is in series with the tweeter to form the high-pass filter. Now, before I measure that, I would like to demonstrate to you what a difference it makes to connect a known good bipolar capacitor across this capacitor right there. So the faulty capacitor connects between these two points. It's a 5.6 microfarads at 35 volt bipolar capacitor. And here I have a known good 6.8 microfarad at 100 volt bipolar or non-polarized capacitor. This is close enough to the original one. I have to mention that because of certain people, but let's try putting this across the faulty capacitor. Yeah, that is quite a dramatic difference. Now, I know to some people this won't come as a surprise. You know who I'm talking about. The sort of people who think that any problem in electronics is simply because of bad capacitors. The sort of people who just bulk replace any capacitors that they see in any device they work on. Yeah, this is where this video might turn a little bit controversial. My approach is different. I like to differentiate, and for me, a capacitor is not bad until it has been proven to be bad. So let's do just that. I have disconnected this capacitor on one side. It's connected to the component checker. And let's see what it thinks about this one. Yeah, the capacitor is supposed to be 5.6 microfarads. As you can see, the capacitance is significantly higher, and the equivalent series resistance is at 140 ohms. And this combination of values appears to be the one that changes the characteristics of this crossover so badly that it actually completely silences this tweeter. So this is quite an interesting problem, because you always have to keep in mind these speakers were built between 1991 and 93. The closest thing to a date code that I could find on this capacitor indicates that it was probably made in 1992. So that's not that old. Now, of course, in the early 90s, 
capacitors were failing left, right, and center, but those were the first generation of miniature capacitors and surface mount capacitors, not these types of very simple traditional capacitors. But there you have it. Capacitor has gone bad. It will need to be replaced. I have contacted the owner of the speaker about what he wants to do. He has not replied yet, so that's where this video ends. Thank you for watching.